So here we have a really simple city. We haven't got high quality artwork in here yet. We could easily replace these buildings with high quality artwork, etc. But if we zoom down, look what's going on down here. We have some people. He's just chilling out. There's another one chilling out. There's one walking, another one walking and a whole load of them over here. Let's have a look down here. Yep, load more and there's a park over here. So what we have is a randomly generated city populated with people and the people are wandering around having the time of their lives. So how do we do that? Let's take a look. It's really simple. You'll be surprised. Okay, so this city is generated with, believe it or not, Dungeon Architect. This originally was just a dungeon generator, but as you can see from the samples here, it has grown into being much, much more. And as we get down into this section, there is a whole range of sample cities that you can use to generate things. So let's take a look at the skyscrapers one. We'll open that scene and we can see we have a different city here, which is much larger and has a very large skyscraper piece and so on. So you can use any of these as your base. And this is the one that I, th I used. And how did I go about changing that? Well, I did a few changes to the theme and so on. Uh, we'll look at some of those changes a little bit later. But before we look at those, let's just look at the flexibility we get from using Dungeon Architect to do this. Now, I do have a video linked up above about how you can change the themes for uh, particular dungeons and let's have a look at what the result is when you do this here. Let's change the C to say 5 and rebuild the dungeon. See we have a completely different uh, city. Let's change it to, I don't know, 565 five, and a different city again. Uh, let's change it to some very large random number and a different city again. And you can go in and you can tweak the way this city is generated to your heart's content. I actually quite liked number five, so let's stop on that one. And there we go. There is our city that we are going to use. I like this greenery that we have here. Okay, so there's a few things to notice, so it's going to be important later on. For example, we have crossings at most of the junctions, but not all. And that's going to be important when we put our pedestrians in. But before we look at that and why that's important, let's put our pedestrians in. So for spawning, I'm using this open source project that I've put out there. So go grab it. It's under a very permissive license. You can reuse any of the code in here. Uh, there are instructions about how to install it, either the development code or via the package manager. So it's really quick and simple to install. And uh, Once you have it installed, uh, you will, if you open it up as a project, you'll see something like this. There's a whole bunch of demos in here, crowd control scenes and so on. The one we're interested in for the moment is Spawner. So we've opened that up. Let's hit play and see what happens. I try to make this project self-documenting. So when you hit play, it's going to come up and tell you exactly what is happening. Let's just make this free aspect. There we go. Um, it tells you what's going to happen. So in this demo, we're going to spawn 200 characters at random, uh, but they're only going to spawn on the non-red areas. So they will not spawn on the red areas. Hit escape to see it happening. And there we go. I don't have a camera that allows me to move around, but you can see that the, none of them were spawned on the red area. They were all spawned on the uh, on, on the uh, light areas here, uh, but they are allowed to move around on the red area. So let's just minimize so you can see what's happening. There they are just milling about. Let's restart it. And they won't start animating initially. But you can see none of them are on the red areas. How does that happen? Well, what happens is you have this spawner here, small crowd, blue and red spawner. You can specify which objects are going to be spawned. We're not going to go into too much detail here. It's relatively easy to figure it out, but we'll look at a moment how we've done it in the other application. Going to have 200 of them spawned in a radius of 30 meters, which is this circle we see here. And what we're saying is only spawn them on walkable areas. And you see, I have a nav mesh area that says no character spawning allowed. If I go into my nav mesh, I can see I have this area, which is, uh, they're allowed to go onto it, but it's a high cost to walk on. And because of that setting in the spawner, they won't spawn on that area. So let's go back to our city now. 
and let's see how that actually plays out. So earlier on, I said I'd made some changes to the dungeon architecture uh, city generator, and those changes were really to take out all of the prefabs that were being used, such as the, uh, let's go with the pathway, and make them uh, a part of the nav mesh. So you can see that it's static, and if I go to the nav mesh, you can see it's marked as walkable. If I go to the road, then again, you can see, if I select the roadway, you can see that it is in the road navigation area. If I go to one of the buildings, the buildings are not walkable, okay? Uh, the park is and so on. And what you can see in our areas is we've defined a bunch of areas in our nav mesh. We've got a pavement, which is the most preferred to walk on. We've got pedestrian crossing, which is they'll do it, but only if they really need to. The road, they will go across, but it's a high cost. So we're trying to avoid people uh, jaywalking here. And then the walkable areas, which in this case of the park, are in between the pedestrian and the pavement. So I need to bake the nav mesh. And let's just uh, go back to the scene view. And now you can see our nav mesh. If I zoom in a little bit, you'll be able to see if I go here, for example, that we have one area for the pavement, one area for the crossing, and a different area for the road. And likewise, over on the park, we have a different area too. Okay, so now we have our nav mesh. How is the spawning actually done? Well, we have our character spawner here, and that is the same spawner that we had in the other project. Now, I've, in order to illustrate this, I've taken out the spawned prefabs object here. These are really simple scriptable objects. You go under data, you right click, you say create wizards code spawned prefab, and that will give you one of these prefabs. I'm just going to delete that because we're not going to use it. And what we have here is the AI UMA. And this is defining, I want to create an AI UMA random generator with a probability of one. So it'll always happen and it will stop spawning other objects at this point. And this UMA generator is an UMA random avatar generator. Now I'm not gonna go into detail about this. There's a video linked above about how this works, but it basically generates as human characters. You can create loads of them with this thing as shown in the video up above, 100 UMAs in about 10 minutes, even if you've never used UMA before. All right, so uh, what that means is the character spawner, when I drop that scriptable object into my character spawner, it's now going to generate 150 of those and it's going to only put them on walkable areas and the pavement. So if I hit play, we should see that happening. And we can see them starting to appear and they're dotted around. And once they've initialized, they'll start walking. And you can see this one is going to jaywalk because they need to get straight across there. But for the most part, they will walk on the crossings as we saw in the intro. Next up, we need to look at how does the AI work with its movement? Okay, so we have our people in here. How do they actually walk around? Well, that's also coming from the uh, character open source project. If we open up one of the other scenes, Wonder with Intent, and hit play on this one, what we'll see is a small number of characters have been uh, formed or, or spawned rather, and that they will wander around semi-randomly. Let me just bring up the player, the, the scene view, because in the scene view, you can see it more clearly. Let's watch this fellow. He keeps walking towards the edge in roughly the same direction. He goes, oh, I can't go any further. And he turns around and comes back. This one down here, same thing, going to turn around and go back. Now, if you watch them for a, one, a long time, this one, see it changed just course there. And again, they're heading in roughly the same direction, but not necessarily precisely the same direction. And what that results in is what I believe is a more natural movement than you find in most wonder scripts. And the way it works is you have this arc here, which the character can move between, and they will try to move within that moving forward. If they can't find a location, then they will turn and try a different direction. If they can't find any direction at all, they'll always return to wherever they spawned. 
So it's really simple. The code is inside of the project for you and you can look inside of here's how the character is made up, but it's just a simple script that picks a location. Now there are some other features in here that provide some nice interesting effects, uh, which we're not using in this city scene at the moment. So if we have a look at our Uma characters, and this is the character we're spawning in, we can see here is the Wonder with Intent script. One thing I did forget to mention, however, is that you can control which areas of the nav mesh it's allowed to have its destination point set. And you can see I have pedestrian crossing and road is unselected. And what that means is um, we'll never stop in the middle of the road. Uh, what happens occasionally is they stop and, and talk or, or wait for something to happen and you don't want that to happen in the middle of the road so the end point isn't allowed to be on either of these kinds of nav mesh it can be on it, any of the others though there's a couple of other pieces that are important in this project that are not in the character uh, one because they're not animated they're just moving around this controller here the nav mesh connector coupled with the um, simple locomotion controller come from a different open source project that I make available. That one is the wizard's code animation and that includes the scripts that you need to control the animation and it's actually easier if we look at it in practice. Let's hit play and what you'll notice when we start seeing the characters wandering around you'll notice that they are animating, you can see they're walking and so on and that's driven by those two components that we had in the nav mesh connector which converts the movement on the nav mesh into uh, uh, signals for the locomotion controller which then drives the animation controller and there's a couple of sam sample animation controllers in that project as well so put all that together and what you get is a really intelligent looking character behavior but actually all they're doing is walking around in a semi-random way and using the nav mesh to decide on whether they should go across the crossing or across the road. So go download the open source project. Do let me know what you think. I love your pull requests or your bug reports or your feature requests. All be great. We'll improve things together. Thanks a lot. Bye bye.